The Suicide Prevention Week, which comes right after September 4th, um, really is a result of people coming together and no longer walking away from this very real reality that faces so many people within our country, including myself. My family dealt with suicide um, when I was just a young boy. I was in eighth grade when my brother Tom died by suicide. And that created such a terrible wake of grief within the family. We had to live with that for years without the benefit of, you know, coming together as church, coming together as neighbors, coming together uh, even in the psychological field because it was a time when you just didn't talk about it. That was in the 70s. You didn't talk about this reality. My brother Tom, as I said, died uh, when he was, when I was in eighth grade and he was about 19. Um, my sister Therese also died by suicide when I was in the seminary. I was a junior in the seminary at the University of San Diego. And we were absolutely devastated as a family because we were waiting for my sister Therese and her husband to come for Thanksgiving. So everything was ready, the table was set, and they were the last to arrive, or so we thought. Sadly, that didn't happen. Neither made it. My sister Therese died the day before, and her husband, after being told about the suicide, um, was to tell my parents, but he never could get to that place, and uh, died by suicide as well. So we were confronted with this harsh reality on Thanksgiving Day. It was hard for us to be thankful. And at the same time, we were blessed by people within our parish community, the pastor and the associate pastor and our women religious who were there to walk with us and accompany us. And ultimately, that is what I want. I want people to know that the church is here to accompany those who are survivors of suicide loss, to let them know that they're not alone in this, and that they have a place at the table and we should be there for them. When my sister Therese died by suicide uh, and her husband, again, we were having to deal with this horrible encounter with with death but also with suicide and all of the troubles that go with that and I found it was it really difficult for me when all of a sudden people were whispering and saying things about my own mental health and wondering about whether I was going to be able to carry on in life and I remember after hearing some people say certain things about my ability to, say, be class president and things like that, and they voted not to have me as a class president, for that reason, that infuriated me. And I remember going out to the end of the University of San Diego campus and just yelling at God, just giving God everything that I had, all of my anger, all of my tears and just saying, is this the way I'm gonna live? Where people are going to simply deal with um, this person who may have the same struggles or the same mental disorders. Is this gonna define me for the rest of my life? And I was angry. I, I, that was an important moment in my life. It actually helped me to then have a better conversation but even there, it wasn't um, a game changer. I still buried a lot, and I wanted to just continue to move forward. Uh, when I became a priest, that was different. Uh, after about three or four years, I really started to struggle. My own sister had attempted suicide again. I had a brother who had uh, struggled with mental disorder for a number of years, number of years, continues to struggle with that. But when my younger sister 
was looking at the possibility of, of death, premature death. That really hit me hard because I loved her. I do. I still do. And thankfully, she's a survivor. But that put me in a spiral and in Great Depression. And I really wondered uh, what would happen to this guy? What would happen to John? That was scary. It was a very, very scary moment. And it challenged my, my vocation. It challenged my sense of identity. Who was I in relation to the church? Who was I in relation to God? Who was I in relation to my brothers and sisters and to my friends? I just, and then to myself, I just didn't know who I was. Uh, if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. And I had buried so much that I just never really looked into growing as I should have grown. And that's why I say again that a death by suicide is, is grave matter because it does affect people around us, including an eight-year-old boy who finally had to deal with it as an adult. And so I did, and I went for counseling. I, uh, for the first time really in a robust way, and I started talking to spiritual direct, my spiritual director in a robust way on this very matter. Um, continued to meet with support group and friends and just, I, I said from then on, I will not not talk about this. I have to talk about this. And so on September 4th at Saints Simon and Jude Cathedral, we're going to gather at nine o'clock to celebrate a mass of, of praise and thanksgiving for all of our brothers and sisters who have struggled, nevertheless, are children of God. And we will offer our prayers and ask the Lord to hold those who have gone before us because of suicide loss, hold them in the palm of his hand. Please see the link below and write or send us a name of a loved one who has died by suicide and we will be able to remember them in a very special way at that Mass on September 4th at 9 a.m.